What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and it's that time of year again where I buy all the top of the line whole home Wi-Fi routers, test them out and give you my opinions on them. So a couple months ago, I went out and spent around $5,000 on the most expensive options from the most popular brands and I've spent countless hours testing them out around the house. So we have the Netgear Orbi RBKE963, the Asus Zen Wi-Fi ET12, the TP-Link Deco XC200, the Linksys Atlas Max 6E, the Amazon Eero Pro 6E, and the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro 6E. So if you're not familiar with whole home Wi-Fi systems, also known as mesh routers, they usually come in a two or three pack and allow you to spread them out around your home to provide better coverage than a single wireless router. So my house is just over 3,400 square feet with three levels. And the wireless clients that I use for testing include the Google Pixel 7, a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, an Intel AX210 desktop NIC, and a Dell laptop for testing 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I use my own internal speed test servers to ensure that all the units have a level playing field and they all have the possibility of the fastest speeds. All right, so now that we've got that all out of the way, let's jump into the results. So I'm gonna start with the most expensive and then work my way down to the least expensive systems. Then I'll compile all the results, tell you the winners of the different categories, and then give you some final thoughts. So first up, priced at a whopping $1,500, we have the Netgear Orbi RBKE963. So this is a quad band three pack mesh system with a cost of about $500 per unit, making it the most expensive of the bunch. The system comes with a main router with two satellite access points. All three of the units have the same design with the only real difference being the ports on the back. So the main router has a 10 gigabit WAN port, which should be more than enough to handle pretty much any high speed internet service. It also has a single 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which can be used for a 2.5 gig device on your network, or it can be used as a wired backhaul connection for your satellite units. And it also has three gigabit ethernet ports. And the satellite access points have a total of four ports with one 2.5 gig port and three gigabit ports. Now I'm not going to dive too deep into all the apps of these systems, but the Orbi app works really well, even though I did run into some setup issues. Even though the main router gave me no issues during setup, I had some issues getting the satellite access points to connect. But once I did get the system up and running, it was pretty much smooth sailing. Most of the settings were easy to find and the app is nice and polished and fairly easy to navigate. And like most of the more expensive systems that I have with me today, the Orbi does give you access to a few extra settings if you log into the back end from a web browser. It's not quite as full featured as a full blown gaming router, but it was especially helpful for testing as I was able to enable a dedicated six gigahertz band and a few other settings using the web interface. All right, so let's jump into the results of the Orbi, which are broken down into six gigahertz, five gigahertz, and 2.4 gigahertz. In the six gigahertz test, I got pretty insane speeds from about 10 feet away in the same room from the Pixel 7. And I was super impressed with this performance out in the driveway, especially considering six gigahertz is usually not great for long distances. The only disappointment I had were the speeds from the mesh access points, which couldn't break the gigabit mark, but I doubt anyone would complain about these speeds. All right, moving on to five gigahertz and we see good consistent speed from each distance. The only thing really lacking is the upload speeds, which were almost always less than half of the download speeds, but still pretty good. And finally, 2.4 gigahertz speeds weren't great from any of the systems in this video, but unfortunately the speeds I got from the Orbi were among the worst. The speeds were all over the place and the connection in the basement and the driveway was pretty much unusable. Overall, the Orbi performed really well, but for this kind of money, it kind of needs to be perfect and blow away the competition in every category. And it's usually done a good job at doing this in the past, but this time around it seemed to struggle a bit. Next up on the list with a retail price of $900 is the Asus Zen Wi-Fi Pro ET12. This is a tri-band two-pack Wi-Fi system which works out to around 450 bucks per unit. Unlike the Orbi system, the Asus comes with two identical routers, so either one can be used as the main router or they can be run completely separate if you want. 
The Zen Wi-Fi Pro has a pretty unique design with a tall rectangular black body with a transparent top portion. Each unit has a total of four ports with a 2.5 gig WAN port, 2.5 gig LAN port, and two gigabit ports. And like all the other systems in this video, they can be wired together with a wired backhaul, and the addition of those 2.5 gig ports is gonna give you the absolute best performance. The Asus app also has a very polished interface. The setup process was super smooth, and with both units plugged in during setup, it automatically found both of the units and set them up with ease. The Asus router app also has the most customization options out of all the systems in this video. And I was able to use the backend interface to turn on a dedicated 6 gigahertz band as well as separate bands for 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz to assist with my testing. And as expected considering how Asus has performed in previous videos, the Wi-Fi speeds and stability were top notch. And the 35 foot test as well as the speeds from two rooms away were almost just as good. The 5 gigahertz performance from the Asus was also pretty good even though it did fall short to some of the other systems which you'll see later in the video. I did get pretty good speeds from my basement though where a lot of these systems seem to fall short. And on 2.4 gigahertz, even though the speeds weren't breaking any records, they were actually among the fastest speeds of all the systems I tested. Overall, the Asus ET12 was impressive, and I really like the extra options you get compared to the other systems. Next up with the retail price of $800 is the TP-Link Deco XE200. This is another tri-band system with a retail cost of about $400 per unit. Like the Asus system, the Deco XE200 comes with two identical units, which are fully interchangeable routers. And for the past few years, Deco has used the same large air freshener style design, which looks more like a vase than a router. Both units have three ethernet ports on the back, which includes a 10 gigabit uplink port and two one gig ports. Now, even though it's nice to see 10 gig ports on these units, it would have been nice to see another multi gig port, considering the one 10 gig port is gonna be used for your internet connection. And the Deco app is polished and very easy to use. It was definitely one of the easiest systems to set up, and like the Asus system, it found and configured my mesh access point automatically. Even though setup was easy and the app is polished, I do have to say that I would have liked to see a few more customization options. But I was absolutely blown away by the results I got from the Deco XE200. The six gigahertz speeds were about the same as the Asus, but it was right up there with the Orbi and the Asus in pretty much every test and it blew them away with the satellite or mesh access point speeds. And it outperformed all the other systems getting almost a two gigabit connection on the five gigahertz band. And it was the only system to get over one gigabit at longer distances on five gigahertz. And the Deco was even somehow able to manage over a gig from the mesh access point, which none of the other systems could do. Now the 2.4 gigahertz speeds were similar to the other systems and they weren't great in the basement or out in the driveway. But I do find it interesting that I find myself getting better performance from five and six gigahertz out in the driveway compared to 2.4. But either way, when it comes to the Deco XE200, I was beyond impressed by the performance from this system. Next up is the Linksys Atlas Max 6E. This is a tri-band three-pack system that retails for $1,000, which works out to around $333 per unit. The Atlas Max comes with three identical full-feature routers like the Asus and TP-Link systems, and the design is probably the most basic with a tall white rectangular shape. Each unit has five ports on the back with one five gig WAN port and four gigabit ports. So this system suffers from the same issue as the TP-Link where you can't get a wired backhaul connection fast faster than a gig since your five gig port is gonna be used for your internet connection on the main router. And like the other systems, the Linksys app is nice and intuitive and I got the system up and running fairly quickly. I like the general design of the Linksys app as it was intuitive like the others, but what I really liked the most is that Linksys was nice enough to give us the ability to easily split all three wireless bands into three separate SSIDs. Not only did this make my life easier for testing, but it's a great way for you to ensure that your fastest devices can connected the fastest speeds and that your older devices connect to 2.4 gigahertz if you need to. And moving on to the performance from the Linksys and I was able to get fantastic speeds from six gigahertz, almost pushing a full two gigs. Moving farther away, I still managed to get good speeds and I was blown away by the six gigahertz speeds I got out in the driveway where the Linksys had the highest upload speed, which is really impressive. And moving on to five gigahertz, the Linksys had nice and consistent speeds in all the tests and once again produced the 
the best speeds in the driveway compared to the other systems. And moving on to 2.4 gigahertz, the Linksys was about average in my testing locations with the exception of the speeds when connected to the satellite unit where it was right behind the Asus system. Overall, the Linksys is a great system that produces great speeds over longer distances. And moving on to our first AXE 5400 system, which is the Aero Pro 6E. So unlike all the previous units I've mentioned in this video, which were AXE 11,000 systems, the Aero Pro 6E is an AXE 5400 system. And if you're wondering why these two systems are in the video, it's because these are the fastest systems that are currently offered by those brands. But anyway, the Aero has a retail price of 550 bucks for three units units, which works out to be 183 bucks per unit. And the Aero has the sleekest design out of all the systems in this video, sitting just under two inches tall and less than six inches wide. Each unit has two ethernet ports with a single 2.5 gig port and an ethernet port. And as expected, the Aero system was incredibly easy to set up as always. The app is nice and laid out in a way that's easy for even non-technical people to understand. Now that can be both a good or a bad thing. And in the case of my testing, I found that the lack of customization was a bit of an issue. Unfortunately, the Aero system doesn't allow you to split the Wi-Fi bands. So I had no control over which wireless band my devices could connect to. Now you'll notice that I wasn't able to test the six gigahertz speeds in my basement or outside of my driveway and that's because without a dedicated six gigahertz ssid i couldn't force my devices to stay on six gigs as they kept falling back to five gigahertz but even still the speeds are good and i have to say i was really impressed by the speeds from the mesh access points all right moving on to five gigahertz and the Aero was actually the only other system besides the tp link that gave me speeds over a gig on five gigahertz the 2.4 gigahertz performance on the other hand was a bit lacking same room performance was okay but the connection in the basement and out in the driveway were basically unusable and completely unstable. But overall, for the money, I think the Aero Pro 6E is hard to beat considering just how far your dollar stretches with this system. And last but not least is the other AXE 5400 Wi-Fi system, which is the new Nest Wi-Fi Pro 6E. So the Nest Pro retails for just 400 bucks and comes with three units, making it the least expensive with a total cost of around 133 bucks per unit. Although not as sleek as the Aero, the Nest has a pretty minimalist design, which kind of reminds me of a cue ball. Like the original Google Wi-Fi system, the Pro 6E comes with three identical routers with two ethernet ports on each unit, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, unlike the other systems in this video, both of the ports on the Nest are gigabit only, so you won't ever see speeds over a gig. Considering I'm not a big fan of the Google Home app, I gotta say I wasn't really a big fan of them forcing us to use it. It's not really as straightforward as I wanted it to be, and I find it a bit too clunky for the average non-technical person to navigate the app and get everything up and running. Now to be fair, once you do get going in the app and you hit the setup button, the setup process is fairly easy and straightforward. So as long as you don't plan to find yourself constantly tweaking the settings in the app, you shouldn't really have any issues. All right, so how was the wireless performance of the least expensive system on the list? Well, the six gigahertz performance was about as good as you can get from a system that's limited by a gigabit port. And the speeds were nearly identical to the Aero from two rooms away. And just like the Aero, I was unable to connect to six gigahertz in the basement and my driveway since there was no way to split the six gigahertz signal into its own SSID. And when it comes to five gigahertz speeds, the Nest was unfortunately in last place in pretty much every testing location with the exception of the basement test on 2.4 gigahertz where it just barely beat out the Aero. Overall, I think the Nest is a decent system for the money and if the Aero didn't exist, it will probably give you the best bang for your buck. So now that we've seen the performance from each of these systems, it's time to put it all together to see how they stack up against each other. So starting with the six gigahertz 10 foot test, you can see that the performance from every single one of these units was absolutely incredible. And the five gigahertz test just shows you how much faster the TP-Link Deco and Eero systems were ahead of the others. And despite being just 10 feet away, the 2.4 gigahertz speeds were not all that impressive from any of these systems. Moving farther away to 35 feet and the results are 
are still pretty close with the most expensive units leading the pack on six gigahertz and the TP-Link Deco once again dominating five gigahertz and the Asus Zen Wi-Fi providing the best 2.4 gigahertz speeds at this distance. And moving two rooms away didn't seem to affect those speeds much at all, but the TP-Link just barely edged out the win on six gigahertz and was still miles ahead on five gigahertz. On 2.4 gigahertz from two rooms away, the Asus and Lynx's systems provided the best speeds with the rest of the systems just barely giving us speeds fast enough for basic internet browsing. And moving on to the first torture test, which is the basement, and you can see that the two most expensive systems perform the best. Once again, the TP-Link blew away everything on five gigahertz, and the Asus did a pretty good job giving us a workable signal on 2.4 gigahertz. And finally, moving on to the driveway, where I honestly have to say I didn't expect to even get a six gigahertz signal from any of these systems, and the speeds were great from all of these units, with the exception of the Aero and the Nest, where I wasn't able to force them onto six gigahertz. The Lynx has somehow produced some pretty incredible speeds on five gigahertz in the driveway, which was also true for its performance on 2.4 gigahertz, which was absolutely terrible by all the rest of the systems. So now that you've seen how all the systems stack up against each other, it's time to announce the winner for each category. So I broke the winners down into three categories. The first category is best overall, and the winner of this category is the TP-Link Deco XE200. With the retail price of $800 for two units, or $700 when they're on sale, the XE200 sits somewhere in the middle in terms of pricing, but I was absolutely blown away by the performance from this system. It was one of the easiest systems to set up and it consistently provided incredible speeds in pretty much every test scenario. I used to regularly recommend TP-Link systems to people who were on a tight budget but didn't care about insane performance, but now I can recommend them as the best overall system regardless of cost savings. The second category is the best bang for your buck, and the winner for this category goes to the Aero Pro 6e. With a retail price of 550 bucks or 440 bucks with this current sale price, the Aero Pro 6e is a hard deal to pass up on if you need three units and you're on a tight budget. Now the speeds from the Aero weren't the fastest and you don't get a ton of customization options, but the Aero is definitely one of the best systems you can get if you're on a tight budget. And the last category is the best system for gaming, and this goes to the Asus Zen Wi-Fi ET12. Not only did the ET12 consistently produce some of the fastest speeds in all of the testing, but it has multiple high-speed ethernet ports and it easily has the most customization options, providing several advanced settings in its web interface. These features are gonna be great for gamers who require the lowest latency and the most control over their router, which allows them to tweak some of the more advanced network settings for the best possible gaming experience. I have to say that Wi-Fi 6E has been pretty impressive, and with Wi-Fi 7 right around the corner, I can't wait to see what the future holds. But that's gonna pretty much do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. And I do have quite a few more videos coming up that you guys have been asking for, so definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.